Dr. Paul and thank you so much for watching this video from Waterfront Dentistry by Paul's. Today I'd like to talk to you about a treatment option called clinical crown lengthening. So what exactly is clinical crown lengthening? Whenever you have fillings that are placed and the fillings are replaced a few times and the filling is gotten deeper into the gum line or if you have a deep cavity which is very very close to the existing bony area below your gum line uh, you really need to realize that a filling when placed uh, can still get by as long as it's placed with complete seal. But when the same tooth has to now house a crown, we worry about the biological width. Now the biological width is a combination of junctional epithelium and connective tissue fibers, which basically in a nutshell or in layman's terms is the amount or the width of the gum tissue right over the bone where the tooth and the bone meet. Now, this is very important to realize because if a crown uh, or any kind of prosthesis infringes on the biological width of a natural tooth, there will instantly be chronic inflammation which will cause a very cratered bone loss which will now be a reason for more and more uh, bony infections in that area. Now, this is also super important uh, to realize because a lot of times crowns were done uh, very, very close to or actually in, impinging the biological width and then eventually the tooth or the crown pops off or has disease which just can't uh, be kept uh, um, uh, clean even with the best brushing and flossing. Uh, the other reason why we do clinical crown lengthening is uh, if you have a large deep filling and if you need a crown to be placed but you, you can't really have the, um, the quality or the amount of tooth needed for that quality of the crown called, uh, called feral. So what, what does feral mean? Feral is a, a, a term that we dentists use uh, for the minimum amount of tooth structure needed for the crown to grip on to the tooth uh, for the most amount of retention. So what we usually say is it has to be two millimeters in height and one millimeter in width, which means if a crown can engage at its edge, two millimeters of tooth as far as height goes and at least one millimeter of that height or the tooth has to have its width, then the crown will be successful. So no, no amount of fillings within done within a tooth, no, no amount of putting pins or posts can compensate for the lack of uh, inadequate ferrule. So when you have a, a, a tooth that has a deep filling and there is inadequate ferrule, what we do is we do a clinical crown lengthening to now go down and expose the uh, desired amount of ferrule needed and also respect the biological width. So usually we say biological width is three millimeters as an average and the amount of clinical feral height is two millimeters. So basically from the end of a filling to the, the margin or the, uh, the edge of the crown, you need to have at least five millimeters of space. So this is the re reason why clinical crown lengthening uh, is done for the best longevity uh, while you're doing uh, crowns or bridges. Uh, this also implies for implants, by the way. So when you place an implant in, and if there is a lip of bone around the implant, when you screw in a crown uh, and the crown impinges the, the biological width of that implant, there again is a root or bone resorption around the implant, which is not very well managed or very well designed because when there's inflammation, the bone resorption is very haphazard and this will cause not only pain, but also future uh, failures of the implant. I hope this has helped you understand the difference between just a uh, conventional crown prep or crown placement versus a situation where a tooth needs uh, a clinical crown lengthening so that that conventional crown or that crown can actually hold better tooth and not cause inflammation or issues later on. Thank you so much for watching.